because I taught myself and they were like, this is shit. When I saw you and my dick shriveled and I felt very uncomfortable in your presence. Joke's on you, folks. The dick was shriveled before I showed up. <laughs> it is wild. I will say I threw up an entire meatball and we'll leave it at that. Episode 17, everybody. It's... How the hell are you doing out there? It is a day. It's a time, everybody. It's the time of our lives. Uh, Welcome back to the show. We are, as always, your favorite and humble dapper dads. (laughs) That's true. If anything, I'm definitely commonly described as humble and another word for humble. I was... um, I was told to shut up at Thanksgiving yesterday because I would not stop going, bitch, sit down, <laughs> be thankful. <laughs> yeah, you seem like uh, you'd ruin a couple things. I, ru- I ruined more than a couple holidays. I've ruined so much shit this week. But before we get into it, let's go ahead and get the professional stuff out of the way. Yeah, it's uh, www.thedapperdads.com for everything. Tight, neat, little horny package for you. Ooh, dude, did we get the horny feature finally? Yeah, it's it's down at the bottom. You got to hit it a bunch of times before it works. <laughs> if I had a nickel for it, every time <laughs> I've been described that way. <laughs> And then uh, dapperdadspodcast at gmail.com for your email submissions or anything and everything. 4027 Dapper. That is 402 732 7737. Call, text, anything, everything. We will talk about it. We have a whopping zero submissions. Today. Incredible. It's almost like no one listened to last week's show. It's been a while. It's been a, a week because of. I keep forgetting what day it is. Today. I know I know. I say it's been a week, but for you, it's really been a week. And it, I know we say it, but I think this is... If you're getting the video component right now, you are seeing me like hunched over this microphone looking like a pile of dead laundry. Um, I am a not... A pile fuck- of dead laundry. I have seen the sun rise and fall the last three days, and I'm not happy about any of that fact because i know as like a 16 year old kid running around doing crazy hood rat shit i would have been like yes this oh, is yeah. fantastic yeah three hours of sleep from like seven to ten in the morning this yeah. is exactly how I it's weird how life. it changes like yeah i used oh, to my do god. that all the time literally like, never sleep and now i'm like oh god I'll, or I, I don't mind watching the sun come out if i've been out drinking partying but then all i can think is like well probably gonna get two hours of sleep and tomorrow's just gonna be a real rough yeah. weird one where because it's like feels it's real it's so pretty to notice a sunrise and you're watching it and you're like wow what a majestic thing of beauty because you're so used to seeing it go the other way you know yeah that when you actually see the world coming to life at the first thing in the morning it's like wow what a special moment and then you're like Working three hours, yeah, working and, three and hours. all you can taste is cigarette butts and Jägermeister in the back yeah, of your mouth, and, and, you're, and you're like, ah, and you wake up like Smithers, and you're like, Pah, and you spit out all the <laughs> cigarette butts, and you're like, I just want to have the time of my life, and then you go back out. Yeah. But as an old man, I can't do that anymore. No. So, the worst is, have you ever like been out all night and then like driving home, and the sun is coming up, but it's a gloomy day, so it just gets a little bit lighter? But like not in a good way. But it's just like it's, it's just gray. still gray. It's like that is it's oh. just not dark. I had that one time driving back from wherever the fuck and I was just like, Wow, this is <laughs> like nothing I've ever experienced. This is this is what the day living, is here, but this uh, it's like that's what purgatory is like. I feel like I feel like you die, you wake up in your car, you're like, oh, when was I driving? And then like and no one is out. But no, no one's like, out. Like, it's not like you can be like, oh, it's a nice sunny day. Why is no one out? You're like, God, I shouldn't be alive right now. Like okay, I don't mind waking up and it's like raining. And the sun's coming up because it's like, okay, it's just going to keep being dark and rainy. That's yeah. fine. But It's the, going from the dark to just not dark. Are we talking about the now. weather on this fucking show? Is that where we've gotten to the point with this that we can't even have anything interesting to say to people? Episode 17, everybody. <laughs> Listen to the dads talk about the fucking weather outside. The shark has been jumped. By the way... It's sunny outside again when we're recording, and it fucks me up because I don't like it. We yeah. are a we are an evening time show. Yeah, I, because today is as of recording Black Friday, and so Slim's schedule has been fucked. Yeah, some people. I'm just lollygagging all day trying to figure out that perfect time to start drinking to where I can be a coherent person for and, the whole day. And I get to work from 2 p.m. to 11:30. Yeah, and when did you get off work yesterday? Or th- Technically, I got home at like 3:30, quarter to four in the morning. Um, this morning this technical. this technical morning this so, technical morning this technical okay, welcome so, to the new npr podcast this technical morning <laughs> here is here's the schedule i had i worked overnight on wednesday from 9 p.m till about 5 30 ish got home sun was coming up yeah went to bed for like three hours 
Woke up, went to Thanksgiving at my mom's for two hours. Mm-hmm. Basically, I had enough time to sit down and eat. Left, worked from 5 p.m. to 3. Didn't get home till about 3.30, quarter to 4 this morning. Uh, and now it's noon, folks. Yeah. How, how's everybody doing? I am running at like... <laughs> I don't want to put a number to it or anything, but, <laughs> but if, if I, but, but if I had to, if I had a if I had a if I had a gun to my head, forty three percent. I'm running at I'm running at a hot solid. I'm like I'm like your I'm like a car like an old car you had, yeah. And like the tranny starting to slip a little bit, and so like your revenant is like, <laughs> and like the gauges don't work. Your speedometer hasn't worked in years. <laughs> yeah. Like half of the radio lights up, so you can tell what the minutes on the time are, but you never know what the hour is. So God forbid you're taking a road trip. <laughs> the cup holders are fucked because you've just been putting out cigarettes in them for years. Yeah. Um. There's just trash all over the floor. I like that you hit us with a like realistic percentage. I hate when people are like, oh, I'm not at hundred percent today guys i'm at like a four and i'm like you mean like death yeah no i'm 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 close to that i'm at the okay so right now that's the kind of car i look like Mm -hmm. by the end of the night i'm gonna look like the car john candy and steve martin were driving at the end of plane trains Mm -hmm. and automobiles just going down the highway (laughs) blue moon or kentucky keep on shining and then i'm gonna be pulled over and they're gonna (laughs) impound me which hopefully is sounds like a nice which hopefully is dapper dad lingo for the cops are going to pull me over on the way home and beat me to death (laughs) hey they've been known to do it listen with the type of fucking week i've been having that's the only thing that could out this weekend on a high note with the type I, of fucking we've been with having. the type of fucking week i've been oh, having I thought you week. Said the type of fucking we've been having i was like we weren't supposed to talk about this in front of the people listen the t- with the type of fucking we've been having i've had so much outside aggression i've had to go get like 17 whores i can't stand you in like that the, anymore i like the thought of me fucking you makes you more angry like that's not <laughs> where you get out your aggression you're like it just really pisses me off like he's when, a selfish lover see it's like, fight. It's, <laughs> so it's like the boss yells at you you go home and yell at your kid the kid kicks the dog you know it's like that i get fucked by you and i get really angry about it so i gotta go fuck a bunch of people and be really angry about it and then they're really angry well and then they just get unhealthy coping mechanisms because i'm so fantastic and they'll never find anyone (laughs) better than me ever again so So i fuck people and make them angry you are just the textbook lover (laughs) they call me the ruiner because after me (laughs) everything else is ruined oh i thought it was because you demolish orifices with your it's big bo- weird penis well it's both with because crooked penis because after you've had a 60 foot tall crooked penis nothing else ever really works so it your never... penis is also 60 feet tall it's <laughs> you just throw it up over your shoulder and then back between the legs everybody so it looks normal everybody thinks i'm real beefy and big but i actually just wrap it around my body like an anaconda at all times so it doesn't chafe you remember how Joe C, the hype man for Kid Rock, can we say topical, right? Very topical. R.I.P. Joe C. <laughs> is he dead? He's been dead. Holy shit, R.I.P. Yeah. Joe C. Um, my, ch- my childhood is ruined after watching him get stretched out in that sweater to be shot saw, at Homer. I saw someone's comment on something, and they were like, R.I.P. Joe C., I hope God gave him a real body in heaven. <laughs> He had a real body. It was just really little. <laughs> but remember how he was like three foot five with a ten foot dick. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm standing with it. Literally You're standing, standing with Josie's think... dead dick. <laughs> it's got dark. That's what we'll call the episode Josie's dead dick. We get a cease oh, and desist yeah. from the estate Please. of Josie. Please. Official, <laughs> official letterhead. The estate of Josie, which is a <laughs> nasty trailer park. But they still have letterheads. Yeah. And there's just they're just, like just they're liquid like, on the paper. They're like, we request the dad's presence for a meeting, and we're like, okay, <laughs> we go. No, it's written with Mountain Dew on official <laughs> Joe C letterhead. You have to like get a lighter underneath it. It's like, is this secret ink? Did they just send us a piece of Joe C letterhead? We put it up. Years later, we find it's an affidavit. We're like, oh <laughs> shit, those hillbillies are gonna kill us. <laughs> Dapper Dads versus the state of Josie. <laughs> and we have a lawyer dog. Listen to an episode where that was stated. <laughs> lawyer dog. And after a damp nap. <laughs> after a damp nap. It's just after a bunch a damp, of references. After a damp nap. Ma- <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. That's why that was That's why that was the title of episode 15. I, I tried telling people. To, uh, so, so I was at work when the episode dropped. And I was like, hey, everybody, my new episode. <laughs> pants over the hand over the pants job is out. And people were like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> I'm like. Yeah. Pants 
hand job. <laughs> yeah. It's... Listen to the Dapper Dads. I like the thought of us just keep doing like the titles like that that are very hard to say because it just doesn't work. Damp naps. I had to get better at saying it because damn naps. Damp naps. Uh, somebody damn. thought I was saying damn naps. Yeah. Like Kendrick Lamar dam. Yeah. And I was like, well, a damn nap. Yeah. Does how that sound album good. puts you to sleep. Ooh, yeah, no fucking hot good. take. Ooh, yeah. You know what? I fucking wanted a U2 collaboration. Thanks, Kendrick. You couldn't have worked with literally any other hot producer or artist out there. I didn't right get now. my fill when U2 put their music on my phone without my permission. Listen, I, that that was an act of rape. I'm going to stand by that 100. Yeah, percent We were say that, we were forcibly given someone given something by someone that we didn't want yeah and that's all there's to and then edge. and then you had to go through a certain process to get it off your phone so it's like you had to go to the so it's like you had to go to the free clinic and get that q-tip shoved up your crank again ah. and so it's like why why you two what is is that how irrelevant they are as a band these days is that they have to literally give people their music like force it upon them to make yeah, them listen to it it is it's because all the a good u2 song um, Sunday, bloody Sunday. Only because I remember being 11 years old <laughs> and my uh, first act bass book had the bass line for that song. Because oh, it's, it's like, first act. I was remembering their drum sets. So they're like, this is a very easy one, two step back. Like, it's like. It's weird because my first act guitar book was fucking Randy Rhodes ripping it. I remember I learned to play Crazy Train, that like, Dan it, Dan it, and your fingers, they're like, your fingers just got to be crazy. Well, yeah, you got to use, well, because when I, fr- I taught myself to play the guitar when I was yeah. growing up. And that's and why you're so bad at that's it. That's why I'm such a <laughs> shit fuck at it. That's why it never went anywhere, because I taught myself, and they were like, this is shit. <laughs> I got one review uh, on iTunes, and they were like, this is, uh. This sounds and like shit I, sandwich. Th- I've seen like some hillbilly music before played, and they basically equated to what I sounded like as two raccoons fighting over an ear of corn in a gunny sack. And I was like, "That's not." I nice. like it when I heard it. I would have said bricks and a wood chipper. But I to each their own. I w- I'm not gonna stand behind all the music I did because I don't think it was all necessarily very good. But I had fun while I yeah. was doing it. When I learned how to play guitar. Uh, for some reason, I never use my pinky, mm-hmm. and it's still a huge disadvantage I have when I try to play guitar because I just want to do things like with these three fingers. Yeah, and so that you have to like stretch your whole yeah. hand. Yeah, I've seen. Pe- I've seen. Um, there's a. Have you seen the dude on YouTube? He plays the weird stuff with his keyboard. He's like bald and just stares yeah, in the, the whole so. time. He was doing one. He was. It was the video where it's like Toto by Africa and like every keyboard mm-hmm. setting that he has, and he was doing like Brazilian like mamba or something like that and his left hand was like and he actually had an arrow and it said this hurt like a bitch to do you better love it <laughs> what i found really weird about your musical endeavors was that first debut album where he took a strong stand against planned parenthood i mean my thing was that <laughs> i didn't have all the information at the time exactly. and when they said planned parenthood i assumed what it was was some type of breeding program yeah. where the, they're like you're going to have a baby i thought we it was have like a plan for i thought you. yeah i thought it was like some fucked up mormon thing and so i was just oh, like there goes the mormon fan i base. was I, oh yeah because we had the mormons hanging on by a thread you know yeah. they were like well the horror movie episode really pushed the church but all the dick references are what make us stay have you have you seen the weird underwear that we put on underneath our clothes everyone thinks it's a jumpsuit but it just looks like a 1920 swimsuit it says the mormon church says three out of five wives agree it's great <laughs> Like if we could get the Mormon Church endorsement, what if that was our first endorsement? They were like, "Boys, you really just say it how it is out here," and that really yes, aligns with the Mormon 16, faith. Someone 17, get it's episode seventeen. It's episode seventeen at this point. You motherfucker, keep up. How am I supposed to make a quality Edit. product with this? How the fact that <laughs> the fact that this has gone this far, I think for both of us is shocking. It's exhausting, to be completely <laughs> honest with you. Like the fact that, and I was proud that we've stuck with it. Oh, I'm proud of us because I've never seen us have this much follow through with literally yeah, anything. Not I mean, at all. Pretty much, except maybe like for, for harming our, ourselves. For us, like having having our attention with an idea or a product for more than. Three minutes is yeah. It's it's a feat that's hard to be done. You have to create an, an, a fantastically credible product for me to stick with it. So the yeah. fact that I've stuck behind this for seventeen goddamn weeks now is 
is unbelievable. And when we hit, what is double 17? Give me some fast math. 34. What, what, man, you must be doing no, I'm, not November. There's no way any man can do math that fast. <laughs> hey, guys, I, uh, I'm, I look pretty stupid, but I'm actually like a Rain Man type scenario. <laughs> I'm a Rain Man type scenario. <laughs> you, the, the movie was actually based off of your life, if, yes, I, if I remember or, correctly. When did that come out? 93? Something like More that. More fast yeah. math. <laughs> That's not right. 2000, 2017 <laughs> minus 93 is... And a ting goes. <laughs> that meme's dead. Get out of here. It's not dead if Big you know, Shaq is dead. still out there. Yeah, you know what's not dead is these fucking... We got more rap Shout snacks out, down Matt here. God, you're becoming a mythical creature. Are we going to try these? Yeah, we're going to try these on the show because I was, uh, are, I was listen, hogged from this. the Migo snacks. I was hogged. Okay. I forgot to review those before we get into this. Yes. So what were the... Uh, let, let me take a look at this bag really quick, though. Okay. Let me Let me... Let Let's me try admire not to have this. Too, crank- too much crinkling. I just want to admire this. The Migos wrap snacks, sour cream with a dab of ranch, very flavorful, almost to a fault. You know how you eat a bunch of sour cream chips and they start to get like it's kind of like burning sensation in your mouth. Maybe it's just me. I think you just have an allergy, and you just this is how I we have find a lot out. Of I had a buddy who found out he's allergic to rice <laughs> because he was eating cinnamon toast crunch, and he goes, "This is really spicy." <laughs> And someone goes, well, maybe it's the cinnamon. And he thought, mm, maybe you're yeah. right. And so he got a big bowl of Rice Krispies, and then he couldn't breathe. No. And he was like, I don't think it's the cinnamon. <laughs> you hear that snap, crackle, and pop. You hear, that, throat you hear that snap, crackle, and... <laughs> <laughs> snap, crackle, gasp for air. Snap, cr- stores now. snap, crackle, wheeze. The other thing, which I'm interested if this will be similar, the... Migos ones were the softest chips I've ever eaten. Like, and I don't know. Pillowy. Would you describe yeah, it? It was a pillowy chip. L- like you were biting. Was it still crispy? It was crispy. Ooh. But they, I can't. It, it's a texture How I was delightful. unfamiliar with. Yeah. I, I ate a bunch of them and then they got hot and weird and then I came back to them. I think you're allergic to something in the chips if they were getting hot. Let's see if these ones are soft. You want okay. To take the first? It's the Fetty Wap edition. So which I, is... I just want to read the quote on the back because the Migos one had mm-hmm. dab, Dabin is a lifestyle. lifestyle yep. With a quote from all the Migos, yep. which I truly appreciate. Uh, from Fetty Wap, we have, Nobody put me on. I got up and worked extremely hard for what I have. Nobody can take that from me. Exclamation point. I mean, it's inspirational. That seems like that has absolutely nothing to do with the product. It's inspirational, though. but it has nothing. I'd, I'd like to think that they think with Fetty Wap's inspiration, you're going to be like, yeah. yeah, you know what? I was life. a fucking bum who was a piece of shit. I was eating snap, crackle, and wheeze every day for <laughs> breakfast until I woke up and found the power that was given to me behind <laughs> rap snacks. <laughs> yeah, rap snacks endorse us already. But yeah, that definitely sounds like a quote from like an interview, and they were like, we couldn't get in touch with them. So, uh, uh, what flavor is it? Honey jalapeno. Honey jalapeno, which is a, be, which is a great flavor in my opinion. And to be honest, the artwork is great. It is very intense with his one eye, though. Yeah, it's, like, it's a great caricature of Fetty within... And what the picture on the back appears to be the actual photo of Fetty Wap. Yeah. Which with I mean, the it, caricature on the front. It works, but having it so crisp and light colors... Because, like, you can tell it's fake. Like, you can tell... Yeah. It, but it's almost like they took the photo and just put, like, some fun filter effects yeah. over it. Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and try go, these. Go for it. Give me... No, you got to take the first... Since, since you did the first yeah, one, since I, did I ate a whole bag of Migos wraps <laughs> in your fucking it's underwear. It's not a big bag. I wasn't in my underwear. I don't know what I was in. All right, let's give I it a shot. I was in a puddle of my sweat. <laughs> oh, this is a nice aesthetic. It'll be a nice ASMR experience for people. Not bad. Ooh, I like that a lot, actually. Because it's kind of, it, it's almost like the, um, the honey barbecue chips from Lay's, yeah, but they're spicier. Yeah, it like comes in later. Ooh, I like that a yeah. lot. That's so, really good. A plus wrap snacks. Yeah, these are better than the Migos ones. They're not soft, right? They're like a normal. Shit. I didn't. I didn't get to try the Migos ones. You fucking. Well, I pigs. mean these. <laughs> if you could imagine. No, these kind of have a texture similar to like I would say like Jay's potato chips. <laughs> so this is topical. where the podcast is topical. Gotten. Yeah, we're reviewing potato <laughs> chips. Listen to us eat food and talk about it. Hey, we were gifted with this. This is... Yes, shout out Matt the God. Yeah, shout out Matt the God for the rap snacks. Check them out on the video component on YouTube. Yeah, maybe. Um, Yeah, if we can get the shit working ever. Yeah, if anyone... (laughs) Yeah, so apparently if you have any audio expertise when it comes to editing video... Listen, we're we're filming it on an iPhone. Here's Here's a peek behind the curtain. It's filmed on an iPhone. 
uh something with the frame rate being inconsistent and then the audio we make it falls out of sync i know this is an issue i've looked into it a bunch and all of the solutions don't fucking work and it's it's literally driving me insane yeah no it it i'm getting some very aggravated text throughout the week so and they're getting increasingly aggressive yeah which is leading my email (laughs) yeah your email was (laughs) because i like i'm using a program that i've had on my iphone forever that's Mm -hmm. for filming when someone recommended it and i was like oh i already have it it's a nice paid app it was like 15 dollars i used to film a bunch of shit 15 bucks for this and it's not fucking working well, yeah, because the frame rate doesn't change. So I thought for sure it would work. I didn't even mess with it. And then I pulled it up and synced it up, and it was still out of fucking sync. May- and it's like, is it possible? We'll talk about this afterwards. Yeah, I'm not talking about much. this on there. Yeah. Now you got me thinking too much about this shit. Imagine how I fucking feel. <sighs> Rap snacks, everybody. And my com- Check and my them out and eat them. computer, I had to take the battery out and fix it. I have a virus that I'm having issues with. Don't update the Windows 10 Fall Creators update because it just fucked my computer. I got a lot going on, man. Yeah, we all got a lot going on, buddy. It's I tried fucking to, week of Thanksgiving. Another story I forgot to touch on last week that happened. Tried to buy some fake Gucci flip flops. Oh yeah, what, what? So what's going on with my fake Gucci's? When am I gonna get some to fuck your bitch? <sighs> no in? one's getting those. I better get some for. I that's the it. only thing I want for Christmas is knock off Gucci's flip flops. That's what I, I wanted to. I found some. I got a lead on some eBay ones, but they're a little pricier. How much are they? Forty ish. Isn't that how much the other ones were? No, those were fourteen. Oh my. Or God. no, they were twelve ninety nine. So I found them on this website. Not gonna say it because it seems like it might be weird based off what happens. Found them on there. Put in my debit card information, and then it instantly is like credit card declined. And I'm like, weird. So then I get a phone call. The bank I use does this all the time. They did it when I did the title subscription. Where Do you they... use a small bank? Uh, it's a local bank. Yeah, it's that's not that's small. That's probably why then, because like what I've noticed just with um. So like when I'm w- with the sweater debacle, <laughs> when I went to yeah. order the sweater, I initially had used a small town bank card, which mm-hmm. didn't work. So I had to use a larger bank card yeah. from Chase and that just went through right away. They just love <laughs> they that. Yeah, they they just love fuck. the big banks. Well, my, my bank is like too worried about fraudulent things. Or like if I go out of town, I went to Minnesota one time and was trying to get drunk and they cut my card off because they're like, why are you in Minnesota? And like because that's where the fun is. The title subscription routes through Sweden, so they shut it off. I tried to buy a video game one time, they shut it off. So I, I, I know the procedure. They call you. It's an automated system. You call back. It will read your last three transactions, and you can say yes or no. And if you say no to one thing, then they'll stop that. If you say no to more than one thing, you have to talk to a live person. Ugh. So I do the, the phone call, and they're like, your last transaction that alerted us was for precious stones. <laughs> from someplace and i'm like well that doesn't seem right so i said no and then the second one they're like your last charge before that was for an online computer store and i was like that doesn't that seem right also either. sounds wrong so i hit no and then they're like transferring you to a person and i'm like i don't want to talk about how i'm trying to buy knockoff gucci flip-flops right now it could be worse man you could be talking about how you're buying like erotic tentacle porn out of japan or something yeah I, you could have just come up with just been like it's a it's a well, clothing then, store yeah well then the guy was like yeah well what were you trying to buy and i was like shoes and he was like, so it says precious stones. And it was like a different price. It's twelve ninety nine. It said free shipping, no tax. And then it came up to 14 something. Hmm. So I explained that to him. I'm like, I'm very certain because it declined it. And you guys called me immediately. It had to have been that. Yeah. But this isn't adding up. And he was like, well, what kind of shoes were they? And I was like, they're like flip flops. <laughs> I don't want to get into this. And he was like, all right, well, maybe like just don't do that. And I was like, yeah, I guess not. And he's like, your second one, it says online computer store. It's from the service we use to upload this so i was like oh yeah that's right and he's like what is that for and i was like i got a podcast <laughs> just like because like, i don't want to talk to you right yeah, now because like i don't want to talk about this shit when i okay yeah. so when i was at thanksgiving yesterday um my mom had invited one of her co-workers and his wife mm-hmm. and so like they were there and my mom was just off in the league oh and as a podcast <laughs> bleep that out um <laughs> And so, part about having the podcast, right? Yeah, that too. Bleep that out. We don't want anyone to know this. Um, My mom was like, "And Slim has a podcast." (laughs) Yeah, that would be so weird. I don't know how I would feel about that. My mom being like, "There's my son, Fast Finger Slim." Like, (laughs) do you have anyone? Like, there's people who only know me as drama. I have some people who only refer to me as Slim. Yeah, or like Fast Finger Slim. Yeah, people who like refer to me as my full government name. There you go. (laughs) And then whoever you were who wanted all the more, <laughs> the more full government names. 
Um, so I have people who, like, I've known forever that do that. People who refer to me as drama that also know my real name and I'm friends with. I call I call you both. Cause, like, yeah, I've, I, cause, that's like, usually how it is. Cause I have usually, some people who yeah. won't call me drama because they're like, it's weird because they've known me for too long. And yeah. it depends where we're at. If we're, like, out at a bar and they say my name, I have a very common name. And then they'll say drama, and then it gets me right away. So right. it's always a weird thing. But then I've met people who I'm like, yo, you only know me as drama. And I have friends that, like, I didn't know their real name. They go as monikers as well. And then eventually you find out their name, and you're like, wow, it really takes the... It, 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 you're like, it That's doesn't, why it we doesn't keep fit leaving here. our yeah. names, though, because it takes the whole... It takes the mystique away. Like, yeah, I want it's people... all we've got left at this point. Uh, so I've noticed since the show, since you referred to me as, like, just Slim mm -hmm. on the air, people have been calling me Slim yeah. in real life. They're like, hey, what's up, Slim? And it's like, okay. I mean, I'm fine with it I'm yeah not, i'm not it's just because yours it. is so long fast finger slam it's like find weird. one I, I i'll just call you with... finger <laughs> yeah just call me hey, fingers <laughs> what's up because it's hey, actually fast hands. fingers limb it's fast fun fingers. fact for you guys fun fact for you Dabber guys. dad fact number 362 uh, uh, also the s's are dollar signs and if you've been spelling them with s's that that's hurt. copyright infringement and you're gonna be sued and die <laughs> I like how you looked at the microphone like you wanted it to. Yeah, talk. and if people would watch the fucking video on YouTube, they would get to see all these great expressions and, you know, they would get to take advantage of our big, beautiful mugs. I was told we need to look into the camera more. Well, like, that just doesn't make sense. And people you know what I people mean? want us to, like, look. They want to see us more. They don't just want, like, a side profile. Well, one day, time, I know, but it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense right now. So who, if you're watching this and you want to see more of our faces, like, hang give out. Give us money. Give us money. Shit me too. <laughs> Come hang out with us. We're Sit all on our weird couch. Yeah, we got a weird couch. Because, yeah, I'd love, like, the Joe Rogan thing where it goes back and forth between our faces. But yeah, but that, that is so much time and money. We can't, we can't even get the current program running. Yeah, how on exactly. earth are we going to do that? Fuck? Yeah, I don't get how people are so demanding. <laughs> and I'm losing hair. I'm bald under the hat. Hey, video, look at this. <laughs> and I just show a bald head. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, Lord. <laughs> he had a full head of wavy hair a week ago. <laughs> That's another thing is I constantly wear hats. And yeah. then sometimes people are like, I didn't even know. Like I've never you seen had it without a hat a, underneath. With, yeah, without a hat, I've never seen it. So it it's like it, weird it is people. interesting because, like, I remember when I first met you, mm -hmm. it was at work, and so you obviously weren't wearing. A hat. Yeah, that's usually how. But it works. then, like, the more time we spent together has been outside of that. So I've just seen you with hat more and more. Yeah. So like when I see you without, sometimes it's kind of like seeing Chance without the hat. You're like, oh, yeah. I know who that is, but like, Shocking. there's no. Yeah, it's still. You're like, there's a human head underneath yeah. that hat. I never how, knew. Huh? Yeah, I even like to family things like Thanksgiving yesterday. I just wear a hat. Oh yeah, I, w I, I wear I wear dad hats. I wear ski hats. I wear I wear I just, ski masks. I rob banks. I, I, I wear ski masks. I rob banks. I run traps. I flip bricks. <laughs> you know, just a quaint little. Just, just another day at the pig hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's episode seventeen. <laughs> so slim, I heard you love gasoline cocks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, mm, fuck, sure, whatever, man. Just, you know, yeah, man, just go. Or you just, talk? Just, do you talk in your sleep? Go. Okay, so <laughs> I apparently mumble in my sleep. I've heard you're a I, mumble rapper. I, in your I, sleep. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> Yeah, like, damn, is that new future? No, Slim passed out at the party. New freezer. AP. I want them to have like two sets of no. I don't want to get my pants. <laughs> but you mumble in your sleep? Yeah, so uh, apparently I mumble a lot in my sleep. I have a friend who dabs in his sleep. Like he, he first of like all. Like the marijuana? Like, like no, the, the, for once the actual <laughs> dance. Because no matter how many times I say the word dab to people, they still think I mean the dance. Um. <laughs> I actually told someone, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go home, take a couple of fat dabs and relax. And they literally thought it meant like sit down and go like, ah, <clears throat> and just like dab. And then Especially be like, oh, like fat games. ones. What is that? You put on like a, like put, a couple put, sweaters. Yeah, and then just have a big old fat arm and I'm like, boom, and just so knock my head into it. Yeah, it's so comfy. You're like, that's a fat dab. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so it, when he's sleeping, first of all, he's just a regular white kid. But when he wake, <laughs> but he talks like such a thug in his sleep. In like he wakes up, he's like, "Man, I told that motherfucker, man, I was," uh, shit. and then he like goes back to sleep. And I'm like, "You do too many drugs. You need." And to. Then he wakes up and he's like, "Wow, what a wonderful slumber, guy." Yeah, yeah, he wakes up and he's like, "Hey, man, how'd you, how are you doing? You sleep good?" And I'm just like. No, I've been watching you. All no, day. I've been watching you apparently re record your debut album in your sleep. It's been, been fantastic. I've you just were been watching you sleep. I saw you spit sixteen bars, sit up, eat a bunch of Mrs. Fishers, and go back to bed. That's the dream. Topical. I wake up screaming in my sleep sometimes. Well, apparently the one time, 
there's been times where I have talked to my sleep and people like tell me about it. Luckily, there's never been like one of those like uh, like sitcom moments where it's like, who's Amanda or yeah, whatever. And it's like, so I've never called out another woman's name. While I was sleeping, praise God. What about having um, sex? Not that n- I haven't called out a woman's name while having sex. <laughs> thinking about other women is an, an, another thing entirely. But according, I'm just to, thinking about women's names. Like, according, oh, Tiffany's a nice name. The two Fs and the I'm Y just, on the you're, end. You're banging some girl, and you're just like, how many different ways can you spell Carol? Yeah. With a C, with, with a, a K, K, with a K and a C, <laughs> with like an umlaut over the A. Carol. <laughs> this is my favorite like thing we've joked about me having sex. Like, <laughs> just, me just, like, just thinking about women. There's a lot of Stephanie's too. I like the I E at the end because oh, but, you get the dot over the I. But it's usually like country girls that have the Y at the end. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried this was going to be a bad episode. No, this episode is fantastic. See, what we need to do is work you like a horse for a couple days. I must work harder and then come. (laughs) Let me not sleep for two days. We got to hit you at your breaking point. That's where I am. Completely lose your mind. That's literally where I. Sweet, sweet slim spot. Oh man, you can spell Kristen with a K. Kristen with an A I N E at the end if you're getting spicy. <laughs> spicy like Fetty Wap jalapeno rap snacks. Hey. <laughs> plug us. Plug us, rap snacks. Can we get rap snacks if we're not rappers? Like, can we be on. Um, what would our rap snack flavor be? Ears and blood? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something not good. I feel like. Well, I feel. Okay. Well, I feel like you could make a chip that resembles an ear. <laughs> I don't like the, I the technologies. I feel, there. I feel like we need to focus more on the flavor of the food and not the actual shape of the product itself. You know me; I just constantly got to go straight to aesthetic. Aesthetic. I like my chips to feel a certain way. He got spoiled by those pillowy Migos chips, and now- I was I was watching a thing, and they did the aesthetic like we did, and I'm just saying. If I catch you fuckers out there, if I catch you shit screaming we've been doing that, for episodes, we will stop. You. You're gonna catch a fade and a cease and desist. We got letterhead too. Yeah bitch it's not pretty i keep hearing and seeing things and i know like parallel thinking or whatever you want yeah. to call it but someone going aesthetic is very specific. specific so I, if i find out who you are i'm i'm just gonna fuck you up yeah um i was gonna say with the talking my sleep thing the one time someone actually heard me talk in my sleep was my sister and i was asleep on my mom's couch and i rolled over at one point and i went eh, i'm gonna kill that fucking dog <laughs> don't know why yeah, i, I love it. animals i would never hurt an animal don't know why i said that and then <laughs> that's like, where you get it out i feel like that's what makes you a good person is all the things all that the you nasty shit just gets out yeah while you sleep you're just like uh, fucking hate women. what the fuck am i getting out of my sleep with the shit i think and say now because i say some shit now um and then 45 minutes later i rolled over and i was like it was it was so nice to meet your folks. <laughs> so apparently, which you know, you would never say. Which either. is something else I would never fucking say. For the love of God, I've never want. Okay, I like a slim that I like. A, I like dream state slim. I'm picturing as the same person, like a Bizarro Slim scenario, like just where me, you want to murder dogs, but you're very nice to your girlfriend's parents and meeting them, or anyone's parents. Like, nice to meet your folks. Sorry about the dog. So me right now is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, I like Dream Slim. He seems like a real interesting guy. It looks just like me, but with a mustache. Yeah. And like an actual mustache and all, like whatever this <laughs> like shit is I got going yeah, for like No Shave November. Oh, God. No Shave, no Nut. Why can't we have a- <laughs> Why can't we just have anything November. in November? Maybe that's why I'm so fucking aggro-aggressive is because I can't shave my face and I can't jizz. <laughs> yeah. And then you're just going to be shaving and jerking off and there's going to be hair <laughs> December, in the cum. December 1st is going to be a disgusting day for everyone. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Well, it's, I just it's, a, it's a Friday, so get ready for it. There's just going to be jizz and hair everywhere. Yep. You'll in see the dungeon, it on the video. Maybe. In, the, in the rap snacks. I had to shave because you've seen what I was working with. You looked like a monster. Yeah. It's you, not pretty. You had like four hairs on your chin that were growing out a little bit of sideburns a, there was some some neck it was a like a little bit neck. a lot that yeah quite a bit of neck yeah. shocking it's like why it, to me it's like okay here's the, the way i look at it like a beard is physiologically something that we've evolved to have where it's like it gets cold outside you get hair on your face to protect it yeah. why d- why does it so predominantly come in in your neck 
because it's, you know, it's like your neck isn't getting hit with the force of the wind. It's the front of your face, but it's the front of your face that doesn't want to grow anything. And when I started, like, getting some facial hair and got to that age where it's like, I should probably shave, I, like, would not shave my neck knowing I don't want, like, a neck beard to be the Right, because they thing. say, like, the more and you shave, the thicker fucking, it gets. And then, like, a decade later, it's all neck. And Nothing I'm like, I didn't neck. even shave it for a long time. And nope. then I would, like, shave the other shit every couple of days to try to get that going. Nothing. Just neck. And I say a lot of times, I just want the neck. This was not what I meant. God damn it, Jesus. Why did you do this to me? I wanted the good neck, not the bad neck. This is a very specific story about Jesus giving you neck. Oh, yeah. That was weird. Yeah. There goes the Mormons for sure. <laughs> L- listen, boys, we liked everything you were talking about on the show up until Jesus started giving you brain. And then we decided <laughs> that. Uh, I like that. Mormons, that's their that's their slur for oral sex. <laughs> What's your go-to slur for oral sex? Uh, br- brain is a typical one for me. I'll say neck if I'm feeling extra rowdy and like yeah. I'm, and like I'm out being like an old head. Neck's you know? good and I forget neck is, about neck it. Neck is an old term. So like I, I feel fe- like it's newer. See, no, because to me, brain is an older term because I was saying brain back in like early high school like yeah, freshman that's year like and stuff a childish like that. one yeah but like it's still fun to say like dome i'll say dome sometimes yeah kinda dome's joking. always weird i just like saying getting my dick sucked like yeah. i don't like i like to say i, I like saying what gobbled. i like saying what is going to happen in yeah. very specific so you know and intricate that's, detail that's what that's what happens with consent is you got to make sure everyone knows what they're looking for well, yeah absolutely because i'm not about to have some girl go- slob on my knob like corn on the cob and not have it you know be consensual i'm not about that well yeah i didn't mean that I got weird. I like to say. Why is head. that weird? Everything's weird. It's a weird day. Why are you saying Today I was thinking. Weird. Uh, when I was driving here, I felt like I I wanted to say I feel like a million bucks, but I don't think I've ever or ever will feel like a million dollars. Did you feel like Pablo? Ah, uh, no, I don't think I've earned it. <laughs> no, we haven't. No, but I would say when, I felt like maybe like ten thousand. Felt really good coming here. That's and then good. I saw you and my dick shriveled and. <laughs> I felt very uncomfortable in your presence. Joke's on you, folks. The dick was shriveled before I showed up. <laughs> it actually came out. That's what I'm saying. It's uh-huh. usually an uh-huh. Annie, and it fell out shriveled. All right. I have not had enough sleep to appreciate your shriveled dick falling off. How much sleep do you think you need to appreciate a good dick shriveled? At, at least off? more than three hours? I grind my teeth in my sleep, which Same. I've been told is a horrible sound for others. I have no idea. I've never heard it once. Yeah, me either, because I'm sleeping. Yeah, I'm still sleeping peacefully. And then and I, I wake up with a headache, it. and I'm like, where the fuck did yeah, this Yeah, I wake come up from? with fucked up teeth because I'm just grinding them. And then they're like, are you stressed? And I'm like, I love when you have to go somewhere, like a doctor or something. They're like, you under any stress? And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like i don't know it's like are you it's like li- listen i get you're only here to like take my blood pressure and like my name and shit like that but if you got about 20 minutes we can talk about the stress are you a therapist or are you a fucking physician because i got some issues physicians immediate care sent me a letter that they will be sending my account into collections did they really so i paid it you fuckers must be nice yeah it must be nice to pay for a gonorrhea knee that's better now they always focus on... I so don't, you admit it was a gonorrhea. I mean, I'm just going off of what the doctor said. Again, and that is all that he said. <laughs> yeah, that's literally... There was no other avenue. Go back, listen I found to the episode paperwork, three. And it said to, if pain persisted, to take three ibuprofens two times a day. See, that shit fucks me up because I'm sure I mentioned this in the doctor episode, but when I got my pace, my pacemaker put into my body, they made a pocket in my chest because my skin was, you know, skin. Yeah. And they had to pull it up. Mm-hmm. And shove the pacemaker in. Of course. And for the pain, they were like, well, we can either give you uh, ibuprofen or Dilaudid. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, Doc? I don't think you got enough ibuprofen back there to make this better. So well, why don't you just go that. ahead and skip to the Dilaudid and uh, have a wonderful day. <laughs> well, they tell me that shit. And it's like, anytime I have something and I'm taking ibuprofen, I start at four. Yeah, always. Like, that's what that's the only I, thing that's going to get me going. I See, I use, here's the thing. I didn't have a lot of guidance growing up as a kid. <laughs> I just want to throw why that. We're here now. I just want to throw that out on the table. There was not much guidance. Um and so I reasoned that since I was bigger than all the other kids, I needed to take more like ibuprofen. So I was taking like six at a time of like the extra strength, et cetera. And so like three thousand milligrams. Yeah. And like it's oh man. And then I'm <laughs> would take six thousand milligrams for like my growing pains mm-hmm. and then not eat anything for breakfast and yep. then be at school, my stomach torn up, yeah. just laying on my desk in agony. And then I'm like, why am I like this? So well, that's the thing, every time I have to go to the doctor, they focus on I don't eat breakfast. Drinking and smoking, 
and then if I'm stressed and I'm like, you're hitting, you're hitting the pieces that put me together. Yeah, here. literally that. I smoke and drink and don't eat breakfast. And I'm I smoke stressed. and drink for breakfast because yeah. of my stress. Like I got fucking vertigo and she was like, what did you have for breakfast? And I was like, I didn't eat breakfast. And she's like, well, you should really be eating the balance. And I'm like, bitch, I feel like I'm going to die right now. It's like, I need you, know you to what, focus Do, do you on... know what being poor is like? We can't afford breakfast. Yeah. I just don't have an appetite in the morning. No, like I don't. That. I do not. And I don't have the time. And it's like, and I'm, yeah, I don't have the time. And it's like, if I shove food into my body and I'm not hungry, I'm just feel like I'm going to vomit for the rest yeah, of the day. Just, weird. It doesn't matter what it is. Even if it's like just some nice fruit, it's still going to sit heavy yeah. and I'm going to feel sick for the rest of the like, day. Like if I don't have shit to do i'll do a breakfast around like 10 you know go out to like an actual breakfast place or maybe make breakfast but like normal day to day i don't have the time catch me waking up like three hours early making an omelet for myself and yeah, shit like what no. the fuck is going on with yeah people? let me wake up three hours before work and just do, make myself breakfast the fact that i can wake up and do anything is astonishing it's, it's a goddamn miracle that i'm awake in here right now i just want to throw that out on the table and, it is and so just for the just for the record we were supposed to record this at 10 30 I yeah. got the text, was sitting on my couch, and passed out immediately after texting Drama back when he texted me back a minute later. And I was just sitting in the dungeon twiddling my thumbs. Whatever. You you were fine. You had, was... you had a phone. No, I set it up for the video, and then I didn't. I, it was in the perfect spot, maybe. I, rea- I, I realize what I'm doing to you is what my dad used to do to me as a kid when he would like be 45 minutes late picking me up from school, and he was like, oh, there's just this good PBS special on, and I had chili in the microwave. <laughs> he ate so much chili that he forgot he had a kid. It happens, folks. Well, wow. Happens. And maybe that's why I hate Alex Jones so much, because he makes me <laughs> think of my dad. fucking dad, who disowned me this week, by the way. Do we want to touch on it? Yeah, let's go ahead All and right, touch well, on let's this. Get in there. Because, um... He finally disowned you. It only finally, took 20, it only took nine years. It only took twenty six years for me to finally get the one thing I fucking wanted from but him. But there was a couple years before where we was thinking about, like, if I ever have a son. Oh God, I can only hope. <laughs> I can only hope. So I really haven't. Um, so there was a really big, weird, complicated situation where he was like my roommate, and it like got overextended, and I was like annoyed, and then I bought a house, and so I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna move on up. And so I was like, you can just have it. And so I haven't really spoken with him because I've, you know, changed a lot as a person since then. And it's like I, um, y- you know, you start prioritizing things in life. And, you know, t- talking to you about your dad, too, kind of made me real. It-, it made me realize that, like, it's OK to not talk to shitty, toxic people. Yeah. Just be you don't have an obligation to people just because they're your family. Yeah. You know? And it takes a lot. And it does take a lot. It's it, it it really does suck because like there's a lo- there's like a huge part of me that's like you know hey maybe I should be more like conscientious towards my dad. I realize he's like he's always gonna be who he is. You know. Yeah. Once men hit a certain age, I realize they just are who they are, and there's yeah. literally nothing you can do about it. There's yeah. no outside influence. There's not a person who can change anything. The only thing that changes old men is Jesus, and that's what I realize is yeah. you always just see these shitty old men, and they either just keep being shitty for the rest of their lives, or they keep being less shitty and love Jesus. Like yeah. there's no you hit in that between. point when you realize. You've burned all your bridges, and the only one is the one upstairs. Well, and it's like he – so his birthday was the other day. Didn't call him because um, I, haven't, I haven't spoken to him in months. And um, my sister called him, and he was like, well, it's a good thing you called me because if you kids didn't call me today, I was going to disown the both of you. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so you're giving me the ultimate <laughs> gift for your birthday. Okay. I was going to say. Interesting. Did you get to the point where you realize you have nothing left to give except what I've always wanted? <laughs> um, I'm really not tore up about it, but, like, the situation around it just pisses me off because he was – because he was talking to me, he's like, yeah, I haven't heard from your brother since he got his house on date and time. And so yeah, it's like right behind. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah, just put in the fucking bleeps. Why the fuck not? <laughs> um, just fucking put them in. Hey, I do the editing. I'm only shooting myself in the dick hole. Pretty much. Yeah. And now you have to put in even more beeps. Yep. Um, I'm just gonna keep shouting. Things. Apparently, he has he has this big illusion of grandeur that he uh, he he said that he hasn't spoken to pretty much anyone in months. He just wakes up, eats, goes on walks, comes home, watches YouTube, um, doesn't do anything, doesn't interact with anybody, and it's sad. It's yeah. really sad it's because sad. it's like it sucks because you're like, well, shit, that's my dad. You know, like he should 
be doing something better with his life but like you can't control people yeah and, like just because someone in there people like that are in that situation because of the people they are yeah and that's, it's and it's, it's like, like he, you have no one to blame but and that's yourself. my thing it's like part of me feels bad as his son but then the other part of me is like you did this to yourself so it's like i can't feel bad for you yeah and then um he said well if your brother ever wants to come back i'll take him back <laughs> so it's like a light disarmament. but under conditions <laughs> so like <laughs> i wish he would have then listed 30 conditions. no and i i begged my sister i was like please tell me what the conditions where she's like he didn't say i guess he is just keeping them secret and waiting for you He's still writing them down i have a feeling he has like a written down note card of things that like he wants to say to me that like i would like oh i don't even want to get into what his conditions probably are but i guarantee you they're insane oh yeah um they're 100 percent insane um and then he he's like, yeah, he hasn't really called me or anything. He called me once and left me a really nice voicemail, but I didn't pick up when I saw him calling. I wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine. But then I called back three days later, and he didn't pick up, so it didn't really work. And then I wouldn't have known about it if my sister hadn't told me that. So really, I never would have – didn't learn anything anyway. I know. That's how but my dad like, is. He's like, I'm going to do these things. but I'm going to do these like, passive-aggressive yeah, things to get so back at you without even telling – because it's like, okay – you're not doing anything for me. You're not giving me any advice. You're not there for me. You're not doing any of this shit. And then it's like, how are you going to give me a taste of my own medicine by continuing to not I know. be there? Like, bitch, I didn't have you for like 12 years when I was growing <laughs> up. You think I can't go another 12? Like, you, like, there was one time where like we were talking again and then he started being a shithole and then we stopped talking for like three yep. years. I did this several times with my father yeah. until I finally was like, you're dead to me. And that's where I'm at. I'm literally at the like, you're dead to me point because it's like. Well, yeah, because my dad was like, I'm going to kill you and text. And I was like, well, you know what? Maybe we should both be dead to each other. Actually, I was like, come catch these hands, old man. I watched you break your foot stomping on the ground one time. <laughs> You're so fragile. Yeah. You have glass bones and paper skin, and I'll tear it apart. Yeah, you've told me some shit about fighting your dad, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like good, good, good for that you. That was between us. Because there, uh, there is nothing I would love more than to just, like, walk up in my dad's house with, like, a Chew by Keith 8 playing. <laughs> and just, like, end him with the shovel going, six, 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 six. My money, six. <laughs> Yeah, I hate passive aggressive shit. I'm dealing with someone right now. Like doing this takes a chunk out of my Fridays, so I'm not really out and about, which we were, and we'll get into in a minute. Yes, that was um, a lot of fun. But you know, recently with <clears throat> all the shows and shit I've been doing this year, like from August, right before we started this shit, or when we started it, up until like two weeks ago, I was so like violently booked with shit to do, like shows and being out of town and running around. I went to Minnesota. I went to Chicago like six times. Six, six shots, shots in Chicago. Six shots for shit, shot, 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 shot town. <clears throat> so I was running around and people take that. I hate when you're just busy and it's like, and then people are like, you never hit me up. It's like, yeah, what do you want me to do? Hit you up like, I can pencil you in in the middle of November. And that's my thing is like, if I'm going to spend time with you, let me spend time with you. I don't just yeah. want to like catch like a 20 minute lunch with you on your lunch yeah. break. Like, let's and go. That's... Let's go out and do something. Let's sit down and like have a conversation if we haven't seen each other in a while. Yeah. You know, I love seeing people. I love seeing my friends. But you got to get you. Don't you also want like quality t time? Yeah. Could, that's yeah. a quality time because it's like I can see you can come see me at work and I'll like bullshit with you for like 10, 15 minutes. But like. I would love to sit down with you and like have a drink, talk, you know, get yeah. see see how each other's been, you know. And it's like I hate when people get salty about that because it's like, aren't I you hate... aren't you also an adult who has a life that you live? Like, what aren't you doing so much that you have all this time to hit me up? You yeah, know? and that's what I mean. Like, and I get it. I think it sounds like I'm just bullshitting. Like, if it's like September and I'm like, yeah, I think middle of November, I'm I'm free. That sounds like I'm just like fuck you. Yeah, and if then I, if... I talk to people around me and I'm like, am I being a dick? And they're like, no, you're literally every weekend like in a dick different city or doing yeah. all this shit like you have done you've taken on a lot and i'm like yeah i have and it was draining on me but i don't i'm not like fucking with you i'm not like i get people say like i'm busy just to blow people off yeah but now i'm getting the shit where i'm like yeah i'm free and then they're blowing me off and it's like this is no sweat off my back yeah like, like it's i it's, didn't it's, fuck with you it's not gonna bother me if you're like oh yeah sorry we, we uh, me and my girlfriend got into a fight and now i can't come hang out yeah. it's like okay if you did that's cool i'm not gonna sweat about it but don't think i'm gonna be like pissed at you either if something yeah. comes up because like i'm I hit literally have so little time. Like, the, you know how you see, like, those triangles where it's, like, social life, mm -hmm. work and school, personal time. You can only have two of those. Yeah. Right now, with the holiday season, I am currently mm -hmm. on the work and personal time. Yeah. The, the fun has taken hibernation until the end of the year. And I keep telling yeah. people that. And they're like, oh, but it's Christmas and blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Christmas. So I'm gonna, be, there's so much shit going on. I still have so much, shit going, so much on. shit going on. I'm going to be Santa Claus for a volunteer event next 
Saturday? No, two weeks. Two God, weeks from the, tomorrow. The traumatic event those kids are about to deal with is going to well, stick the, with them for years. Well, the biggest problem for me is that I have to figure out if the Santa hat is going to be big enough to cover my plugs because Santa doesn't have plugs. Uh, and so I just put candy canes through them. What? <laughs> Well, what I was hire me for marketing and design someone. I've got the ideas right off the top of my head. I'll give you five ideas. One of them might stick. The other four, they're not. All right, fire off five ideas for me to do something with my ears for the Santa costume. Candy canes. Yes. Uh, cotton candy in the tubes. No. All right. Too big. Um, let's see. Like stockings hung from them. Maybe cookies if they're like smaller cookies, and you could have the kids pop the cookies out of your ear and eat them and, and eat them yeah um mm. some sort of scroll like a naughty list and a good list and you could pull them both out of your ear and then un- unveil them and read them off ah uh, yes you know what would traumatize children the idea of santa pulling a name out of his brain that has their name on it hey my first job was Chuck E. cheese and yes i was the rat everyone is the rat most obnoxious question of my life everyone has to do it were at, you the rat at one point uh there was the big room where all the parties were, and there's a step out of the Chucky room where he changes. Yeah. The costume is clearly, it's just one size. So there's people who are like my height, and then there's girls who are like 5'4". So Chucky changes appearance a lot. And the feet are like massive, and the head is massive, and the hands are massive because they have to like cover whoever's putting it on. Yeah. And so one time someone who was new like fell and tripped and the head came up and rolled down the aisle and all the kids were traumatized i love everything about that and being chucky is like you have to learn a dance and then the kids can you dab at the kids i mean this was a long time ago i could have invented dabbing but i didn't uh it was it was more like it was more like a crank that type Ooh. era so i would crank that but uh. there was like a specific dance you had to did learn did you superman on the hose too? i did Ooh, all the kids man. but the kids there's like a couple types of kids kids who are big fans chucky chuck e cheeses is the business name it stands for charles eats cheese is chucky's full government name I there never... you go that's the one you know you wanted uh, sorry i screamed but i forget that fun fact there is a list of that is awful that I know. There that. is Get a that list out of my brain of rules. You cannot sign autographs because the kids might match up the handwriting over time and realize that it's different. That is one of the first genuine rules from the Charles Eats Cheese Corporation. So you're telling me that Charles Eats Cheese wants to continue this belief that Charles is in fact one singular real giant party rat that's clearly a costume. Yes, but even though it's a costume, he's a real rat, mm-hmm. and at all locations this is like it gets better this would be like if the disney corporation wanted like you know wouldn't have people sign as like mickey mouse and stuff like that because they do that down in disney world if disney can do it why the fuck won't chuck e cheese do it chuck e cheese is like chuck cheese has more standards and morals chuck e cheese is like trap house disney world (laughs) like disney world has a bunch of infant bodies under their soil i'm not gonna get into uh another oh another another charles rule is you cannot hold it hold a child which you think easy enough like yeah you wouldn't it's hard but to people see. want you to like hold their people babies will and take pictures basically throw a child at you throw like, a child there's a lot of people who will be like hold my kid and then they just hands release it and you gotta like catch a baby <laughs> catch, catch the a baby. baby everything comes full circle oh my this god this episode is great <laughs> this episode's fantastic we're figuring that maybe we should do more in the middle of the yeah. day we might find shit out about it. each yeah, other that might be it too is it's early so people early will in the just... day push me to my breaking point <laughs> yeah, this is how we get shit done yeah hey this is how we can give it. you a nice calm relaxing day and have Thank me you. stressed beyond all holy yeah belief. i work better when i'm calm you work better when you're stressed mm. we're opposites i perform better when i'm stressed let's I put know. it that way <laughs> but uh <laughs> and then yeah so there's three type of type of kids one who's just genuinely happy to see you right like big big charles fan Kids who are petrified of you, but their parents think it's funny or just want the photo. So they're like screaming and crying and you you can't talk. That's another rule, believe it or not. So you have to learn a lot of like, oh, if the kid's crying, like cover your big stupid mouse eyes with your big stupid mouse hands. 
And like people just want the picture or think it's funny, which if I was a parent, I might think it's funny. And yeah. My kids like crying at this giant. Rat. Oh, if, you know damn well if you and I both yeah. had kids and we took them to Chuck E. Yeah, Cheese for a day. Yeah, we had kids together and took them to Chuck E. Cheese together. Oh, that I sounds still get nice. free tokens. Doesn't that sound nice? Uh, and then a nice family of you and me, two dapper dads, <laughs> taking the kids to Charles Eats Cheese. For Charles the days. Eats Cheese is anti-gay. Are they really? <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I could I could see it. We could we start a, fucking, a rumor. We had a a gay manager who was incredible. And, like, would diffuse fights and, like, scream at customers that were shitty. And then we had this lady who was, like, super religious and had a mustache and was an awful bitch. Mm. And then our main manager was just a, like, normal older guy who was very soft-spoken. And one time went to an all-you-can-eat prime rib dinner and ate so much prime rib. <laughs> that he that forgot asked... what grade his kids were in. <laughs> that, too. They asked him to stop and they refunded his money if he would just leave. And he is a slender tall asian man with a thick mustache it's always the asians that can eat a bunch like you That's always true. we always look at like the eating co- like the hot dog competitions yeah. like every year like the nathan's one in new york and yeah, like dunk that bun all, in the and water they're eating and like f- oh and they're eating like 10 at a time and I it's know. like how are these people horrifying well because what it is is like the us big fat american dudes we got these big belts of fats on our stomach they yeah. stop our stomachs for expanding these it's always the skinny little people that are really good Back at eating them. well it, haven't you seen that video on facebook it's like the woman eating like the 10 pound steak in three yeah. minutes and she's like just skin and bones and, she, and she's just ripping into it like it's nothing it's terrifying in the man it, it was highly erotic for me watching this watch it you watch you from outside of your window oh you were at my house at three this morning yeah Ooh. Um, saucy the third type of child is the one that knows you're a fake mouse and wants to punch you right in the dick that's usually their first go-to the other thing is, like, the hands are also, like, the forearms. So mm. you put – that's one of the first things you put on. And they come up pretty high if you don't have long arms like I do. And so the shirt only comes – so there's only, like, a good two inches. So there's a gap where the yeah. sleeve could fall down and if you're not the careful. the hands don't fill out because they're so oversized. So you can grab the tips. And so many kids would do this, grab the tips, and just start pulling. And your real arm starts coming out. And you can see it in their eyes that they're evil little bastards. And they're Who just are trying, trying to, like, fuck yeah, you up. Yeah, punch you in the dick, kick you, kick you from behind because it takes so long to turn around and see what the hell was there that the kids are gone. Yeah. So it's just a lot of torture. All those kids are pieces of shit. Amen, brother. But yeah, Chuck E. Cheese was uh, quite a job. What? I gotta take a piss. Can you pause? <laughs> Jesus <this>? Christ! <laughs> All right. Well, that was quite a shit you just took for two hours. Oh man, let me tell you. It was uh, a lot of sleeping been, and shitting. A lot of lo- when you've been okay. Listen, man, if you're going at a certain percentile, you got to shove a bunch of food into your body to keep the car running. You shove a bunch of stuff in your ass. God, I might and as well keep it going. Jesus, I might as well just shove it up there and cut the process and have just shit for two hours. That's what half my shits are: is shoving my own food up back in my ass. What? I'm so <laughs> tired. I can't do this anymore. I'm breaking down. <coughs> All right, so uh, anyway. Kill me, kids. So Chucky e. fucking cheese, right? Well, yeah, should we touch on our uh, our night on the town last? Friday? Oh, absolutely, because we 16. had a fantastic our night out on the town. episode 16, Unwind, because it was such a quality one that we had to go uh, talk about it for hours. Oh, yeah, we had such a... <laughs> oh, God. No, le- uh, so afterwards, after we recorded... Last week, the well, the episode that came, I don't even fucking know how time works anymore. We went out after recording a fucking episode. Um, uh, yeah, last, episode 16. La, episode 16, we went out afterwards, Um, went out with Matt the God. Mm-hmm. Um, Cole was supposed to show up yeah. and ditched us, mm. so we're calling you out on the air right now. Yeah, it doesn't Thanks get a lot, much man. more personal no, than this. It does not, buddy. Thanks a lot for- So uh, if anyone fucks us over, expect to be called out Oh my out God, yeah. Air. Don't think you're- not, If you think you're ever going to fuck me over and I'm not going to put your life on blast on this show for my dedicated dapper followers to come ruin your life, I'll do it. <laughs> Charlie Manson's dead, man. I gotta. There's got to be a new cult leader out there. Oh, hell yeah. The dapper dads. Yeah. Do what the- da- don't Drink the lemonade. Do what the- the, punch. the strawberry lemonade. It would be- Oh, strawberry lemonade. Bro, I'm gonna be drinking heavily today. I got the the frozen strawberry, uh, frozen strawberries from Walmart. Frozen some, strawberries. Some lamonade and a big jug of vodka. Good. I'm gonna make vodka strawberry lemonades probably as soon as we're done recording this, and I've got until 2 a.m. to coast. So I'm gonna get a bunch. So I'm gonna of be snaps. doing a 12 hour drinking. So session. I'm gonna be getting a bunch of snaps until 2 a.m. Of maybe. Think I might be going to a 80s dance party. Where at? Keep you posted. Mary's, which we'll get into. 
Uh, yeah, but let me know about that afterwards because oh, I'm off at 11:30. Hey. So if it's still going on, let me know. I think it will be. But uh, yeah. So we we hit the town uh, running. We started at CJ's because we didn't want to get to Rue too early when it wouldn't be popping. Because which you we'll get in. Because usually when because usually a good rule of thumb is to get to the Rue around 11:30, 12 because it's yeah. pretty popping or around even like the, 11. Yeah, it's usually pretty full and it's, overcrowded. It's hard to and, call, but yeah, you want to get that sweet spot where you get in there and can get some drinks before it's like balls yeah. to butt. So pregame a little bit at CJ's. Yeah, so we had uh, a drink or two at CJ's, uh, listened to some Future on the jukebox. And then some kids started putting on Eminem and we had to leave. Yeah, <laughs> fucking ruin it for everyone. Bunch of assholes. Then we went over to Brew, which it has been a minute. It's Re- been a long time it, since you've been there. It's, it's been, been remodeled. A well, yeah, it's been a minute since I was there. Last time I was there, they had switched the stage. And then for those who know, they the stage used to be right on the right when you come in and there was like an upper part that you could go up to where the gaming was and you could get to the bar from up there yeah so that was always like the go-to spot for some reason when i started going there everyone i knew who was already going there that was like just the cool area you're up a little higher it makes you feel like a god i used to just get up on the bar from there and just random shit and so the bouncer was like you haven't been here in a while. You haven't seen the changes, and that whole area is gone. It's gone. It's more it's lit so up. So terrible. Yeah, it's w- the brew did not need more lights. Yeah, if there was one thing that I would say they needed, it was not more lights. It might have been fixing that giant gaping hole in the bathroom. Maybe where you could see the pipes, which I put a sticker on. Good <laughs> on the pipe. Maybe that'll give them incentive to fix the pipes. Yeah, it's like a hole in a wall in a hole in a wall. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> it's hole in the wall section at this point, and it is. Yeah, they have a velvet rope now by the gaming machines, which was where we were standing because there's somehow less room. Yeah, and it's... a lot of old drunk men. Folks, and... we really hate to do this to you guys, but the Dapper Dads are labeling the Rue as officially dead. Yeah. And it, it, hurts. It, it hurts. It hurts me. We, we, th- all three of us, we were pretty, pretty fucked up about it. It was not, it's not a, f- we've had so many goddamn good memories outside yeah, of the imagine room. Me. I was, for oh, a long I, time, I like, was there I, so for much. how broken my heart is, you must be devastated because I, it is. I went there when they told us we couldn't stop, we had to stop smoking cigarettes out front. I went there after they found a dead body next door. I was there for everything. Yeah. And I never thought you could take it away, but I don't know what. It's just different. It's, just it's so, not like a huge change. No, but, but it's, it's like just, the changes they made have made it so weird because it was nice having the bar higher up. It was yeah. nice when it was crowded. It was yeah. nice having, the, even though it was crowded and stupid, the karaoke right in the front was so much fun. Yeah, because it's like, like the perfect spot. Yeah. Now it's so like disconnected. It's disconnected. It's weird. And like it's, everyone that was like the same as me, like regulars that I either met there or I've known when i was younger that i ran into and became friends again there like there's a bunch of people that if you go to the rue you're gonna see these people yeah and it slowly died off because people you know move and shit happens now i don't know anyone there no i know i know one of the bartenders but that's it i didn't yeah. i didn't recognize anybody that was hanging out in there there was one dude that i used to work with that came up to me but it's like we yeah, weren't close those, and he was like, like weird ties. about it. yeah it was just like uh i don't yeah. know i didn't like it so we it was weird but you you were even gonna do some karaoke what were you, you went up to put a song i was gonna do some fallout boy and because everybody was doing like all this weird slow yeah. shit and, and then they a were drunk d- family did uh motor in by sister christian and like and what the screamed, f- screamed the whole even and off key and off rhythm as you could and like i get they were having fun and shit like that but like if that's the pinnacle of you're not getting fucked up and singing cr- yeah, sister with christian with clearly it was like two sons with their mom and dad yeah. and, and like the dad was drunk the dad was drunk that like that I, I am so i'm so like convinced that's you from the future who came back I mean, and those could, were your two happen. tall handsome sons that you were singing motoring with up there yeah. i wouldn't be mad about that but i would remember this now and be like oh that's not what I wanted this to be like. Oh, God, it was just, it was so, yeah, not we, fun. So RIP the Rue, we we loved you. We had some great memories with yeah. you, but unfortunately. Everything has to die. I'll never forget uh, the good times. Everything that has a shape has an end, my friend. And it looks like we're just going to have to move on to bigger and better things, which we may have found. Yeah. It turns out. And I want to preface this by saying uh, Mary's Place downtown was never a place I went to really because I went there on my 21st birthday. I don't recall it. I was drinking outside, which based af- based off of us going back, I don't think you were supposed to do. No. But it was my 21st birthday, which is a story we'll get into at some point because it is wild. I will say I threw up an entire meatball, and we'll leave it at that. Um, so, yeah, I'd been there for my 21st birthday. I don't really recall it. I know I spilled a beer and someone got me a shot. I went. 
again where people were throwing bar stools at three in the afternoon on a Sunday. Nice. And the the bartender goes, You've gotta stop. I have real customers here. And someone let a dog in the bar and someone offered to share me a year share a euro with me, but not like I'll split it in half. Like that I'm gonna eat it and then you're gonna eat idea. some of it and I've never met you and I'm really dirty. That's, <laughs> that's one of the joys of Mary's place, man. You never know what you're gonna get when you go that's there. Because I've been I've been there on several handfuls of occasion. I've been there for like the it's open mic. Handfuls of it's, 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 it's late, god damn it. Don't tell me what to do. It's early. Fuck! Um, time. time. Time is an Fuck enigma. time. Time is irrelevant at this point. No, there was like, I, because I, I used to jam with a bunch of hippies in town back in like 2010, 2011. And so mm. our hotspots were Mary's Place and the Hope and Anchor. Yeah. So we'd go do the different jams and stuff like that. I, I got don't this, like Hope and Anchor anymore. Uh, I don't like it anymore either. But Fuck Hope and Anchor. I, I like Ian. Ian's a fantastic guy. And I know if I ever went back in there, me and him could sit for several hours and just shoot the shit. But it's like, man, just not, it's just not what it used to be. Last time I you went. Know? The lady, it took like 20 minutes. I met people there. Mm -hmm. Me and a buddy met his brother and his friend, and they'd been there, and she'd been apparently super attentive. And then we get in there, and it took so long. And then I finally get the drink, and I go outside to smoke a cigarette, and she thought we ran out on our bill. And it's like, I should have, because you never Because you never fucking came over and did anything. But yeah, and then the, the last time I was at Mary's was also like in the afternoon on a Saturday, and it was like just sad and weird well it's sad and weird in the daytime when you can see everything but when it's nighttime and all the unscrupulousness is hidden it's it's a much more charming place yeah so we ended up venturing down there paid the five dollar cover and the beers are huge yeah and cheap i say yeah can i get a budweiser and he motions short one tall one i'm like tall one and then he gives me a giant bottle of budweiser like a 22 or something and then he's like, yeah, it's three bucks when I was paying two fifty at the roof for, for a regular for a bottle. Regular. So I'm like, it's already paying for itself. And then we witnessed some um, death metal. Yes, which was very. Um, was it? What was the name? Pain. Pains. I actually yes. have their album on my phone right now. It's it's not bad if you're into that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was surprised. Like I've said it before, I dabble with like death metal. And I don't. If a live show to me, as long as it's not like country or some like. Well, even I've seen really weird, like, noise shit and, like, crazy shit. Mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Like, it's a live. You know what I mean? I'll go to a show just to go to a show. And that's kind of, like, what it ended up being. But, yeah, you, like, got right up there pretty soon. And me and Matt hung back for a minute. And then when it actually started, I got up there. There's even some fun moshing. Like, they need to open up that floor a little bit. Yeah, because the moshing was a little bit. Yeah, it was a little weird. Well, because the rest, I found out uh, later from a friend, the other bands that had played that night were a psychedelic band Mm. and a cheap trick cover band. Wow, that's what Rockford needed. Yeah, that's exactly what we needed here in Rockford. Go by the Cheap Trick co- uh, Christmas album that came out today for Black Friday. Oh, did it really? Yeah, Gross. I saw it when I was doing the only Black Friday shopping I will condone, which was Record Store Day Black Friday. Shit. Um, yeah, one of my favorite parts was as soon as that band started and we were still sitting back against the window, there was a group of four like younger women and a guy in like abercrombie shirts and yeah. as soon as it kicked in that i watched him like literally like leap up and like run out like well what is this far too loud <laughs> and it was one of the times once i got up there it was so ungodly loud oh where it was, I was so nice though that i was like i seen a bunch of people putting in earplugs before and i was like <laughs> bitches yeah and i got up there and i was like this is this oh no is it was that kind of loud. i'm gonna look back when I'm old and I can't hear and I'm going to be like, that's one of the top ones that led me to this. No, it, they were insanely loud. So if you can check them out, they're called Pains, P-A-I-N-S. They have one EP on Apple Music that I was able to locate with one single. So they don't have a ton of material out there, but what's out there is <laughs> solid. Sorry, I was trying yeah. to talk through that yawn. <laughs> I um, like, because yeah, death metal, if it's like the real fast shit, mm-hmm. I'm with that. I love that. But, but like in the it middle of like the, the breakdowns, yeah. and it gets like real like slow and sludgy and and shit well because to me they to me i was trying to think of what they sounded like and it sounded like a mix of uh converge and nails to me because it had like that real aggressive like that the fastness of converge because converge does like fast really well but they it sounds like loud but it's not always as aggressive as it could be nails is like a hundred percent aggression the whole time it's just like pound 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 yeah i like the fast crazy beat blast and and they only had like one song that was like yeah, and that ended was up, like I slow. went to smoke a cigarette because I wasn't feeling it, and then that was their last song. And I was like, oh, I would have No, it was like their second to last song. Oh, was it? No, it was like, they, they had like two left after that because that was, they mm-hmm. did like three fast ones, and then the middle of their set was the big, long, slow one, and then they ended it with two 
fast ones again. So was, I feel like they played their whole catalog pretty much because there's only six songs. I feel on like there. that's how like a lot of like death metal bands end up being in the beginning. Yeah, because like, like they just having, get a because bands too. You just make something and like go. Well, because the thing up. is like the music is so extreme that like you almost can't handle more than like a half hour. Yeah. In, in a way, because that's why um there was a band I was really into back in the day called the Chariot. Uh, their singer was Josh Skogen, who was the original singer for Norma Jean. Mm. If you ever listen to them back when they were Ludacris at first, like Luta Chris. Oh, I love Luta. Chris. I know, right? <laughs> um, and then uh, Bless the Martyr, Kiss the Child. He was the vocalist on that, and then he pursued other careers and started the Chariot. So with the Chariot, they were always one of the fastest, noisiest, craziest, most chaotic bands I ever listened to, and their live show was no joke. Like they would be like, they would break all of their equipment at the end of every show. They would smash everything. They would be hanging from the rafters. They would throw instruments back and forth and I've catch seen them. Some shit. No, the Chariot was some shit. They were in incredible they were a live energy that could not be matched but their live shows were like that they were only like a half hour long or something like that because it's like you can only be that kind of crazy and fast and shit for so long before like you just can't keep up well i've seen some hardcore bands where they're like this song's called blah 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 and it's just like thank you and you're just like (laughs) i've seen one band and i think all their songs were like 35 seconds long and that's the worst yeah, you just like start moshing them. They're like, thank you. And you're like, what the fuck was the whirlwind that just happened in here? Well, because when I was in high school, I was really into grindcore for a while. So mm-hmm. I was really into a lot of like the UK grindcore bands and a lot of the American ones too. And part of the problem with their music is that the songs themselves are so very short that they're almost hard to distinguish unless yeah. you're listening yeah. very carefully. Yeah. So like, uh, have you ever heard of Pig Destroyer before? Yeah. I love Pig Destroyer. I will always throw down for Pig Destroyer. Terrifier. One of the best pieces of heavy music ever written. When they re-released um, Prowler in the Yard, I bought the whole super deluxe edition yeah. that came with like the book and everything. Yeah, I had um, a friend who was super into Pig Destroyer. And their, to me, their best album was Phantom Limb because it actually had song length to it. Like the songs themselves were around like three, four, five minutes long a piece, yeah. so it actually had structure so you could remember it. But like the early albums, like Terrifier and Prowler in the Yard, there was like 25, 30 songs a piece, and they were all these just quick little things, you know? They yeah. were just like these short, fast little things, and that's their style because um, J.R. Hayes, he writes just like this weird, violent poetry that he screams over the music, yeah. and like it works, it's really well, but it's like it's hard to differentiate the songs and like learn the words yeah, at that exactly. point, you know? And that's what bugs me sometimes that's with that stuff. That's what I always love, like listening to rap i have friends that are into like death metal and are in death metal bands and stuff and they're like i don't know man rap is just it's hard to understand what they're saying i'm like really <laughs> and it's like and I'm, you're listening to devourment and waking the cadaver oh my god like those bands that are literally like <laughs> yeah the pig goggles or whatever yeah i love waking the cadaver because they had the <laughs> and it's literally all it is and then yeah. they're like here's the lyrics and it's like and it's no like, it I isn't fucking slit I, the baby's throat and shit in it yeah. and you're like well that i don't even want to listen to this actually. at all why do i want to that's th- what i loved about devourment was it was like serial killer interview sample nonsense and the fucking shit that they're singing about screaming about i'm like yeah. yeah, I have so many friends who are like, ah, I can't understand what Future's saying. It's like, yeah, I can't understand what I can't. You're I can't to. understand what I can't. I can't understand what fucking J.R. Hayes is saying. Yeah. But I still like it. He performs well. There's a video of him back in like '98 uh, when they were on one of their first tours, and, and he screamed so hard into the microphone that it broke, and so he just finished the song without one. And you can still hear him I over know. the band, and it's so insane how loud that guy can scream. Yeah, like I, I feel like know. that would like do something to your body. I feel like yeah, I, mean, I don't get how people can even like keep that up with just the screaming. No, it it that. it's uh, man, my throat gets tore up just chain smoking and talking on the yeah. show like this. How the fuck am I supposed to scream for forty five minutes? But yeah, so uh, the uh, opinion on Mary's place has changed. Like I said, I'll probably be there tonight, so maybe it's the. It's the new spot, and literally all it's the people bad. from Rue are there now. So. Yeah, and it was like fun to hang out. The bar itself was spacious. It was yeah, nice. It was, There's like a good dedicated area for like if you wanted to fuck with the music, yeah. or if you wanted to sit at the bar, or like hang out in the back or yeah. hang out in the front. You know, like there was there was space. The people were nice. Like yeah. you know, like they. It's th- still a very like Rockford authentic. Yeah, it bar. was. That's been how long has that been there? It's, like it is. Years it has been there shit? forever. That's like I cheap, always feel like they say Rockford's oldest bar. I don't. It know is because one of those well, things. Cheap Trick got started there obviously because they would play like the open mic nights and stuff so that'll give you a a bit of an insight into how old the bar is uh my mom saw ted nugent perform there oh god was he racist and shitty probably but it was the like the 80s so nobody really cared yeah did he uh shoot a guitar with an arrow because i saw that as a child i only hope he did (laughs) god yeah but mary's place yeah shout out mary's place never thought we'd be saying that on the show yeah i never thought we'd be like Ruse dead mary's place 
life comes at you fast. 2017 has been a weird year, man. But then we uh, we capped the night off, as we tend to do, with at, a sweet, sweet trip to Los Portales. Ah, fantastic. Even though it took us 20 minutes to get service because that guy wouldn't stop talking to his fucking boyfriend. Yeah, and uh, I got cold tamales, which everyone makes mistakes. I think it might have been because I didn't believe that that man was wearing Yeezy Boosts. Yeah. Remember I said that and he shot me the coldest stare ever. Well, it's like, fuck, man. It's how how rare is it you're going to see Yeezy Boosts in Rockford? Yeah, and know? why is it the waiter at Los Portales? Right. Like, I, I don't think your waiter money is buying That's Yeezy what Boost I'm saying. Like, if I was like, because like, to me, like, if I was going to see Yeezys in town, it'd be over on, like, the northeast side or something. Yeah. You know, it'd be like a, like a really nice bar. Yeah. But, like, not. And not. that's not your work shoes. No, that's those the are. Thing. Like, those are, like, going out flashing shoes. Those are flexing shoes. Yeah. Those are not go Those to, are, like, very specific those aren't, events where you know that nothing's going to get spilled on them and you want just people to see them. Yeah, not what? Like, I might drop a tamale on a shoe. Yeah, what's the retail value of Yeezys right now? Like, what are they going for? Do you know? At least three fifty. Like so, new uh, so, resale is st- st- like stupid. So if if this kid, but let's say he bought them brand new, yeah, from 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 a site from from a store or something, three fifty plus tax, looking close to like four hundred eighty bucks. Yeah, and you can even get. I mean, even if they're like, I'll buy shoes sometimes that are like a hundred dollars, and yeah. I'm like, it that, takes that, me a long time to finally let them be shoes. I know it's like that's extravagant for yeah, me. Yeah, like I'm, I'll break them out when I'm not going to like the rue. Yeah, if I'm going to like somewhere where I know like drinks are going to get spilled or wearing them to shows. Like when I'll go to like uh, festivals and I see people in like nice Jordans and like Yeezys and stuff, and I'm like, and it's like I get you're trying to flex and look yeah, good, you but you're just gonna fuck your shoes up. Are you just gonna stand all the way in the back forever? I, s- I stepped on the toe, like this much of the toe of my coworker's Adidas last night, and he goes, "Man, what are you doing?" And he's yeah. like, oh, oh. And there wasn't even a scuff on the show. And I'm like, relax. It's Black Friday. You're the one who wore Adidas is out on Black yeah. Friday. Again, your work shoes should not be like your all out shoes. Like, no. you got to have a plethora I d- of shoes. I beat shoes up so much. I don't even have going out shoes. I just yeah. have shoes that I wear because it doesn't matter what shoes I wear. It doesn't matter how much money I spend. They will be tore up in five to six months. That is just how I live. I have going out shoes, but they turn into hoard them in my closet and never actually wear them. Like, I have a pair I've seen. of uh yeah jordan grape fives and they're beautiful yeah and uh, for years i didn't even wear them and now i'm like i'm kind of over that whole thing of like buying expensive shoes and like why so i'm like maybe i should just fuck them up so people are like oh what you do to those and i'm like lived in them yeah i have a pair of reebok pump released a seven deadly sin pack you could only get these all seven shoes like a thousand dollars for all seven shoes each shoe is the color to match like whatever Mm -hmm. like greed is green i have a pair of baby blue sloth ones that just got resold on ebay for like 50 bucks Mm -hmm. i don't think the guy realized what they were the the like lace tag says sloth on them they're like super rare and beautiful and i occasionally break those out and i'm always like I hope I hope nothing happens to these. Hope no tamales get dropped yeah. on my shoes. Tonight. And then I'm just shoving tamales in. I'm drunk and I'm like, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have wore the sloths out. <laughs> Sloth loves chunk. But also the great part about Los Portales to me, I've been there. It fe- I don't I think we lost some time at some point, like we tend to do. We did because they were like closing. Which yeah. I've been there like even later than we were there and they weren't closing. Yeah. But I think they wanted us to leave, it seemed. And what they chose to do was loudly play 3500 by Travis Scott. Featuring Future and 2 Chains. Yeah. And if you want to know one thing about us, if you want me to leave, maybe play some country or just like static maybe. Even but if they were going to play out. like, I don't even know what you call it, that Hispanic music that's like, do, mm-hmm. dun, 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 dun. like yeah. that'll make me leave. Like, yeah. But they chose 3,500, and then we're, we're all like, well, now we're just going to stay and We sing sat this for the loudly. whole song yeah. and rapped the whole thing. Yeah, and they're like sweeping, and it's like, you picked the wrong one. Like, 3,500, let's go. <laughs> like, only, you only, <laughs> yeah, I, you can't even say, yeah. only true, I yeah, know, yeah. Only, only, only real, I know. Yeah, only, it's only, one of those weird real, ones. I know. I love Future, and he's like, pour with me, drink with me, make my walk, pop in the wraith, and I throw it in a park. But yeah, that's not how you uh, clear us out. If you're ever trying no. to get us out of somewhere, don't turn on. If, if you're trying to get me out of somewhere, don't turn on Travis Scott. That's just not the way to do it. If you're turning on Travis Scott, I'm saying for at least the duration of the song and as much time as it takes me to calm down afterwards. So r- really, they're lucky I wasn't there for 20 extra I know. minutes. Well, did, one of us tried to play Future in the jukebox. And it wouldn't let me. After. Yeah, because I think they were like, these fucking pieces of shit need to leave I already. just wanted to hear Mask Off, Mask Off as I was ending the night. That, w- that was my send-off song. 
that would have that would have been phenomenal. But I've never even heard a rap song there. That was no. It's so always weird. been the traditional music that's there. I've yeah, I like, like I don't even hear it. I'm just in conversation. And as yeah. soon as that started, we were all like, "What?" Because well, the bass was so audacious yeah. too. It was shaking the whole restaurant. I know. I didn't know they could do that. I didn't either. But now I'm glad that we do. So next time we go, we yeah, can throw we on that, that knowledge. Travis Scott song. I like having. Uh, I like being able to get to the jukebox, just like at CJ's before. And it's hard because you're like, yeah, everyone can go for it. Like, I would pay an extra, like, 20 bucks to give me, like, an hour or even a half an hour of just my shit. I recently was at a more upscale bar, and I played Magnolia five times. And Nothing it only took that. two and a half before they unplugged the machine. Damn. <laughs> I was like, how many Magnolias can we get? After the third, hey, Pierre. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, Which is technically like the fourth because it's two times in the song. Technically. There's one. <laughs> after the after the fourth, hey, Pierre. You, they were like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Everybody flipped out. Some guy was like, if I got to hear hey, Pierre one more time. No, there was one time. Um, You ever, you ever listened to Swans before? Have you ever heard of them? Yeah. They um are known for their incredibly dense – soundscapes of music so they just create these big walls of noise pretty much yeah um their 2012 album the seer its title track was 29 minutes long and those jukeboxes were carrying it for some reason oh so God. i decided to at one point go to a bar and put the seer on 30 times <laughs> so that was at least 15 hours worth of music jesus they, Christ. they unplugged it after 45 minutes because they heard the whole song and they were like wow that was <laughs> that was a lot wow and then it comes right and then up. it came back again with the because it's like strings and guitars yeah. and i just heard the, the guy behind the bar he just goes no <laughs> no <laughs> no well, no what... walks over unplugs it plugs it back in and i was like god damn you i paid like so much money for this <laughs> Well, there's some songs that just should who, be... Who watches The Watchmen, I screamed as I was pulled out of the bar. <laughs> there's some songs, I don't know why they're on jukeboxes. You know what I never need to hear? Stairway to Heaven. Ever. Ever again, but especially in a bar when I'm trying to turn up. Yeah. And just shit, yeah, there's so much shit where you're like, you you, you spent your hard-earned money that you could have had another drink, and you went up and played one of the Beatles songs that we've all heard to death and yeah. don't need to hear You right could now. have bought a shot, and instead you decided to hear that Led Zeppelin song you got a hand job to back in the 60s yeah. while you were waiting outside the concert because you couldn't afford to get in because you bought too much acid. Yeah. Or maybe you want to hear Freebird because it's so funny. That's such a great topical show. Oh, joke. I love hearing Freebird. I like to bar. yell it at shows, and then when I'm at bars, I like to play it on the jukebox. If you do that, go kill yourself. Yeah, there's. I've had battles with people where they're like playing garbage music, so I skip their shit, and then they know, so they go up and skip my next shit, and we just go back and forth. I had an incident at CJ's where I was like, I'm going to beat the shit out of this guy in the alley if he doesn't knock it off. He was just playing like bullshit and he was there by himself and it was a friend's birthday and we were trying to play shit and he kept going up and like we'd go up and put something in and before i got back to my seat he was walking up and i think i think the girl whose birthday it was when we were leaving was like you ruined my birthday good <laughs> sorry just... we ruined your birthday by giving you better music choice maybe you should have friends that actually care about you and want you to have good music yeah i i hate i like the battle and i like i like playing that's what i love about cj's like i played I know we don't do it anymore, but XXX Tentashing oh. When uh, Look At Me <laughs> at a bar, and <laughs> you're just like. <laughs> yeah, it was that really slowed down. <laughs> <the sad version. laughs> but yeah, just seeing. One time Matt played something like maybe Two Bitches by Young Thug, mm -hmm. and we just. You, I love when you see people like, oh, it's no longer our bar. Let's finish these drinks and leave. This is uh, this is not the kind of evening I was looking to have. I do not. Uh, I cannot relate to two bitches. There. I do not need two bitches. I need to go to. My a, money does not stack as tall as two bitches. Maybe I could just go down to the Rue Marche and hear Motorin again. <laughs> God damn it! Or like the twenty others, like, or just like yeah, uh, fucking journey song that everyone constantly don't karaoke's. stop believing which i did is it don't stop yeah i think that is the yeah one. that's the one i did that a long time ago when it was the first time i ever karaoke and a woman made me do it with her <laughs> if you know what i mean mm. wink wink nod nod and I then she you was did her in me. the hole in the hole in the wall yeah she dropped me off on sixth street where i lived and then she turned left on a one way and i was so drunk i just went well <sighs> I, hey, at that point, when you're out of the car, that's not your responsibility yeah, and anymore. And then I watched her turn the wrong way onto an off-ramp. She turned it into an on-ramp, and she's still around. Uh, shout out to her. We've, 
Shout out you. I hope you're still wonderful and prosperous with everything that you're doing and your strokes of good luck are continuing to follow you everywhere you go. Well, that uh, that sounds like it's uh, episode 17. We're per- keeping a little short. Here, Slim folks. has to get straight back into work. Literally, I am, I'm in 25 minutes. I have to punch in to be there for 10 hours. So uh, if, if you want to come see me and kill me, I know you're not going to hear this, but if you come kill me anyway after this airs, I'll, I'll fuck, I'm sure I'll fucking appreciate it. So come blow, come kill Slim. For, come blow Slim. <laughs> come blow Slim for 12 American dollars. So yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. This was I like this episode. This, this was good. a good one for the good middle guy. for how tired I am. Good I God, this was a great one. Good, good God, no, his mollies. This was a fantastic episode. Dear God, we thank you. <laughs> so dap the for being with us. <laughs> so www.thedapperdads.com, dapperdadspodcast at gmail.com, four zero two seven dapper. That's four zero two seven three two seven seven. Three, seven. God, we thank you. <laughs> Facebook page, Spotify playlist. It came out like last week or whenever. And it's, it's a very, slapper this it's week. A slapper. It's a great list. It's a slapper. Listen to that little Zan song over 5,000 times. Because like if you've been depressed all week like I have and you've just been driving <laughs> around good. chain smoking at two in the morning, listening to Betrayed, you're going to feel this playlist. Trust God. me. She said she wished I'm in. She said I hate that I'm in. She, 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 she hates my like insta feed. <laughs> she hates my insta feed like Zan's gonna break you. Zan's gonna Yeah, stop taking you. Xanax, you fuckhead. Stop taking Zan's kids. It's Send not us fun. Submissions. We love you. We love you. We praise you. And as always, amen.